Good afternoon. Welcome to the 28th of January's meeting of Hardin County Fiscal Court. I'd remind you if you have cell phones, uh, to please turn them off or put them into vibrate mode. We'll begin with the roll call if you would, Ms. Donnelly. Judge Berry. Here. Easter. Here. Doug Goodman. Here. Boone. Here. Clem. Here. Wiseman. Here. Thompson. Here. Ronnie Goodman. Here. King. Here. Uh, Mr. Thompson will lead us in the invocation and Mr. Ronnie Goodman in the pledge, if you'll please stand. I invite you to pray with me. Father God, uh, today we uh, thank you that we're gathered here today. We pray, Father, that uh, you would just guide each one who's present, uh, fill us with uh, your mind and your heart. And we thank you, Father, that you know us even now, our minds and our hearts. We know, God, that uh, if we accomplish anything today, it will, it'll be through you. Uh, we thank you for that, Father, and we pray that you'd bless our time of meeting, that uh, as we do meet, we'll look toward what is good and right for this community. Father, we thank you uh, for each person who is present. We thank you, Father, that uh, the seats of this courtroom uh, are near to filled. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you that people have a heart for uh, what is good and right in the community. And we, we lift ourselves up to you and pray your blessing on us as we uh, consider your um, um, business today. For Father, uh, uh, what we as a, a human institution do uh, is, is only allowed because of, of you. And we praise you that you're in control of us and that you have charge of, of our lives. We pray, Father, that you would uh, direct our minds, give us clarity of thought, and help us to uh, carefully weigh and understand uh, how we uh, have opportunities to view things differently. And we pray, Father, that uh, through it, we'll honor you and glorify you. Bless us today as we meet. Uh, and we uh, want to give you the praise and glory for uh, everything that uh, is accomplished good in your name. Amen. Will you join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First up is informational items, and the uh, first on that agenda is Hardin County, Kentucky United. Mr. Rob Powers. Thank you, everybody, for letting me uh, come and speak with you. I've spoken with about everybody up here on the phone, um, some in person, some on the phone. I'm the one that's uh, covering for Kentucky United, um, for Hardin County, Kentucky United, for the second month of sanctuary. Um, I feel it is an honor for me, for everybody letting me speak one voice for them. Our main goal is just to do to get the second amendment sanctuary to pass through. And everybody that I spoke with knows this. I'm not a political person. I'm not somebody that's gotten into this. But I, this is something that I wholeheartedly believe. I have a ton of people behind me that believe in the same thing. The second amendment sanctuary, as ever, all of us understand, we know exactly how it works. It doesn't put a cap over us to... If the government makes, government makes laws that, it, that we, we're not untouched, I understand that, but it does also show where each and every one of you stand. Five of the magistrates have already passed. I'm not going to say who didn't. Five of them are on board. That's amazing. That's a great start, I think. Um, we need to have more. I mean, my opinion, I, think, I don't think it's out of reach. As of right now, we have 97 counties in the state of Kentucky that have passed this. So it's not like there's five people doing it. Um, we have, on my Facebook page, we have... Uh, approximately close to 2,000 people on the Facebook group. These are all people that are in, in for this. I have literally received like three people that were not for it, like negative comments on as far as this whole ordeal goes. That to me speaks um, amazing because I mean, there's a lot of people that are, aren't for gun rights and so on, you know, a lot of stuff like that. I figured I would catch a lot more grief about it, and I haven't. I've gotten tremendous support. I've got tons of people that have, have been getting uh, autographs, you know, signatures for. That for just just for the, the calls, I guess you can say, each and every one of us have either directly or indirectly had guns save our lives or make an impact, a positive impact on our lives. 
this whole ordeal is not about just about Second Amendment. It's about the Constitution that you guys all sort of uphold. And I understand. I, I really think you guys are behind <coughs> I do. I'm not saying that. This is just a re, re you're just more or less you're just confirming that you're going to hold up to the oath that you swore to uphold. Not, that's the biggest reason why I don't see what the uphold is. But I understand the legal part of it and all that, and that's why I redid the resolution that I, I sent. I made an email to copy to everybody. Um, I don't understand what the, what the holdup with that was. That's why I redid it. Biggest thing, number one thing I want you guys to think about, this isn't five people wanting this. This is the people that voted you in. This is the people that are supposed to be, you guys are supposed to be our voice. That's why we're wanting this. Um, that, that's the number one thing to remember. You guys are working for us. I love Arden County. I absolutely do. I'm being serious. It's cold heartedly. We have a great county. We really do. We've got good people. We've got good honest people, good hardworking people. And it's, it's not, I don't think it's out of the question to ask for it. I really don't. So that's about all i got to say, really. I hope it helps. I mean, I hope it makes a difference. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you. As I mentioned to you before, we appreciate you being here today to share your views with us, uh, perhaps to help you all understand a little bit better of our thinking and for the media that now that's in the room today. Uh, I have prepared a statement that uh, most, if not all, the magistrates have seen uh, that I'll read to you that perhaps uh, give you a little bit more clarity for us. Uh, but on Sunday, January 5th, the News Enterprise published my article explaining why I believe we cannot and should not designate Hardin County as a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Some continue to ask us at least to at least pass a resolution stating on behalf of the citizens of Hardin County, we support the Second Amendment. All nine voting members of the fiscal court support the Second Amendment. We support the Constitution and all 27 amendments of it. The fact is, we took a solemn oath. Many of us have taken that oath numerous times to support the Constitution of the United States and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Additionally, through our military service, six of us have sworn an oath to defend the Constitution. Laws regarding firearms, however, do not fall within the purview of local government. By law, the regulation of firearms is withheld to the state and federal government. Regulating firearms does not impact the functions of Hardin Fiscal Court. Hardin Fiscal Court does not get involved in approving resolutions supporting issues not impacting the operations of county government. Fiscal Court members are not representatives of the citizens of Hardin County to the state or federal government. The people elect General Assembly members to represent them to the state and members of Congress to represent them to the federal government. We have heard the voices of some on this issue, but we do not know the will of all the citizens of Hardin County. As I stated already, all nine of us swore an oath to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, as long as we continue citizens thereof. This includes the Second Amendment, the second of 27 amendments to the U.S. Constitution, as well as the seventh right specifically enumerated in the very first section of Kentucky's Constitution <coughs> ratified in 1891. Each of us last swore these oaths for this term of office on December 11, 2018. So instead of a symbolic resolution that has no legal authority, we give you our solemn oath, copies available to you today, last signed and attested to December 2018, affirming we, affirming we support the entire Constitution's of this nation and the Commonwealth, so help us God. And there lies our rationale for why we don't feel like we can accommodate what you're asking today. Any of the court members have any comments that they'd like to make? Well, you know, a resolution is simply a legislative act. It's just an expression of opinion. Of course, I realize it probably values some of our residents. It also lets your law members, uh, lawmakers, in the state and federal know how their people feel in their districts. I don't have a problem voting on it, Judge. I mean, if we could put it on maybe the February 11th meeting for an up or down vote. 
as we've mentioned before, I'm not, I, I would, uh, I bet a lot of money that there's not a legislator in the state that doesn't know how we feel. A piece of paper is not going to change that. Any other comments? If you know, not, Judge, yes. uh, excuse me, uh, as a young man, 19 years of age, uh, I took the oath of office, or, or the oath, to defend this, this nation. And shortly thereafter, I found myself in Vietnam, 1967-68. I believed in the Second Amendment and the Constitution then. And in 2010, when I first became elected to this position, I took the oath of office to protect the Constitution of the United States and of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And I still do. I'm 72 now. And nothing's changed since I was 19. I support everything you're all here for. But resolutions are a slippery slope. And when you start down that road, sometimes they end up wrong. So we have to be careful about what we do as a body here. And wherein I support the Second Amendment. And the reason I think the Second Amendment is the most important, uh, important uh, amendment, because I think our founding fathers actually put it there in case the government does, did not follow the First Amendment. Mm. And that's what I believe in the Second Amendment. And I'll stand and I'll give my life today for the Second Amendment. And this is my resolution, sir. This is what I stand behind, not a, not a piece of paper that's symbolic. And I understand what you're saying. And I, and I, and I you know, I, I, really, I really do. But this is what I stand behind, this Constitution. Thank you. Any other members? If not, we certainly appreciate you being here today. We invite you to come back every second and fourth <coughs> Tuesday uh, as we have fiscal court. We'd like to see you here. Can I ask you a moment of silence? I understand where you guys are coming from. Like, you know, when uh, you and I spoke, I understand the opposite. You and I both were on the same day. You know, I know that. You know, you guys are not going for 100% of the resolution. I don't know if it's the one that I sent you guys with that, but that's what's stopping you is how it's worded or what have you. Is there any way that you could be able to do, I mean, a, a resolution of any type? And, and like the cops that I sent you guys last, doesn't have a word resolution in it, that would have kind of closed gaps for you guys. What I'm getting at is if, you're, if we can do something different, you know, reword it some way to cover yourself, I don't have a problem with that. I, mean, I, want, I just want, my main, my main goal is, is for us to send a message. That's all. Just so, so that we can, you know what I mean, so that everybody else in the state knows how we stand. I mean, I, I, you know, you know I, I know that you understand what I'm saying. I get it. I understand where you're coming from from your aspect also. also. And we can't agree on the resolution that I've offered you guys. Maybe we can do something different, work in a different way or what have you. I don't have a problem with that as long as all of us get to see where you guys stand. I mean, you're a good guy. I know you are. I know, you know what I mean? I know what I understand. I think, listen to me, but I think we have a good government here in Arden County. Don't think I'm poking any, any way you guys. I really do. But I, I just feel like it, it, it's, it's showing, it's sending a signal to the rest of the state that we're staying in one of the largest counties in the whole state. Arden County is held up pretty high. I don't understand that. I mean, a lot of people would have Arden County. They really do. So, I mean, just something to think about. Maybe you guys are, you know, we're going to run across or something like that and bring up another meeting or something. That's, that's, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. We appreciate it. <clears throat> May I add a comment? Yes. Um, for the state of Kentucky, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and those citizens, you need to know that I think 100% we are behind the Second Amendment here in Hardin County. Uh, this is uh, something that should be broadcast on television. And I'm hoping that um, the state of Kentucky knows. We expect our legislators, uh, Dennis Parrott for me, uh, Jim Duplessy for me, and each of your legislators to know that also. And they have heard from me on that. And I encourage you to make sure that your state legislators and uh, even national uh, representatives and senators uh, understand how important it is that we, the people, have the uh, right and authority uh, to take whatever uh, arms that are necessary to keep our nation a free nation, uh, free from a government that might in some way want to take those rights away. So I, I encourage each of you to make contact and encourage others to contact with you, those people who are at the head of this, 
that must protect those rights that we're guaranteed in our Constitution, which we're sworn to uphold, and I intend to uphold it in every way possible. So thank you very much for being here today. Um, but I challenge, get the word out. Hardin County, Kentucky is a county that completely supports the Second Amendment. I don't think you'll find anyone here who doesn't. That message has been sent strongly by your presence today, and the media is certainly reporting it. We'll move on to the next item under informational items then, which is acknowledge the Hardin County Sheriff's calendar year 2018 uh, um, audit that was included in your packet. And we just need for the minutes to reflect that the uh, court has received that. All right, we'll move on to department and office reports. First up is EMS, Jamie Armstrong. Good afternoon, Judge Barry, members of fiscal court. Good afternoon. I'm here to present my December 2019 report. Uh, the most monthly collection comparison, as you see here, from 2018 to 2019 numbers. 2018, we brought in $383,526. And this past December, we brought in $437,806. Um, pretty good little jump. Um, and as you all well know, um, from month to month, year to year, numbers are up and down as far as revenue. Um, and we're doing everything we can to try to keep that consistent as we can. <clears throat> billable versus non-billable, uh, for the month of December, we made 1,467 calls. Of those calls, 1,204 were billable, 263 were non-billable calls. For year to date, at the end of the uh, six months, the first half of the fiscal year, we made a total of 8,328 calls. And of those calls, 6,841 were billable, 1,487 were non-billable calls. So, the summary for uh, the first half of the uh, fiscal year for EMS, total mileage driven was 256,828 miles. Uh, total runs, as you saw from the previous slide, was 8,328. Of those, the non-billable were 1,487, and the billable were 6,841. Uh, total collected revenue, uh, ambulance medical billing, was 2,427,000. 387 and 62 cents. And of course, the, the yearly $10,000 for the KVMS grant that we received in August. Um, total expenditures for the fiscal year was 2,972,705.38. And it gives us a net negative of 535,317.76. Um, I don't like to come to you with that large of a number. Um, however, it's halfway through the year. We have time to try to redact that number and bring it down some. Unfortunately, costs associated with Narcan, with medications, um, the back ordering of medications, where they're increasing the cost because of supply and demand, many other things um, are increasing our costs that were not thought was going to be there, uh, but they are. And we're working on making sure that the last part of the fiscal year, that we try everything we can to bring that number down, and we will. Additional items, uh, re the remounted ambulance we will be picking up on February 13th. Tim Carr, the shift supervisor, and he's also our fleet officer. Um, he's going to go to North Carolina, pick that ambulance up, inspect it, and then drive it back. Uh, that will give us five of the six frontline ambulances will be full and drive. Uh, the truck style type ambulances, two in Radcliffe, two in Elizabethtown, and one in Sonora. Um, and then also February is uh, American Heart Association Heart Month. So if anybody out there that has a family history that knows they have issues with cholesterol, hypertension, any kind of heart issues, please go see your physician um, or get tests performed um, because you just never know. Uh, e even though you seem healthy, you could have something going on that you may not know about because predominant family history is, is a big precursor to having issues later on in life. So, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them if I can. Narcan, do we use a lot of that? Do what, sir? I'm sorry. Narcan, are we using a lot of that? Unfortunately, we are. 
Um, there's many different uh, committees uh, and teams throughout the county and throughout the region uh, that are trying to figure out how can we stop or slow down this epidemic. But we're utilizing Narcan on a daily basis, unfortunately. And it's not just teenagers, middle-aged people. It's people in their 60s. You know, it's, it's all walks of life. Anyone else? Right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Hardin County 911, Mr. Mike Leo. Good afternoon, Judge Berry, members of the report. I'm here to present the activity report for the month of December last year, 2019. 911 calls answered 4,534. 7,908 CAD reports created, answer 2,857 admin calls, dispatch ambulance service 1,495 times, dispatch 380 fire runs, handle 1,400 attempt to serve prisoner transports and traffic stop type calls, conducted 13,059 NCIC link transactions. This is a breakdown of calls of service by agency. Uh, again, EMS is primarily requested service, 65%, uh, followed by the Sheriff's Office. Next slide. This slide just breaks down the fire department, run, fire runs by department. Obviously, Town and Radcliffe always tend to be the majority because the most more populated area. Calls transferred to our Secondary sites, uh, total calls transfer is 1,267, 409 to Radcliffe PD, 591 to E-Town PD, and then 267 to Kentucky State Police. This is a breakdown of the entire year, 2019, uh, for the 911 center. Total 911 calls answers, 57,370. The folks down there generated over 100,000 CAD reports, answered 37,931 admin calls, dispatch ambulance service 17,378 times, dispatched 4,436 fire runs, handled 19,350 attempt to serve prison transports and traffic stop type call for West Point and Sheriff's Office. And a big one, where our increased personnel has come from 179,197 NCIC and link transactions. This is just a breakdown of the three categories of the CAD events created 57.1% for 911 calls, 19.2%, and the same for the admin calls and self initiated events. Here just shows the breakdown of uh, the different categories of the, <coughs> the type of 911 calls that we received. 65%, uh, 65.2% 65 for all emergency. 11%, um, 11.1% no contact. 8.7% were actually false calls. 10%, 10.7% uh, false calls, and then 4.4% uh, non emergency. This slide just represents the calls sent to our secondary sites. Next slide. Here's the breakdown of all of those NCIC transactions. It's one thing that keeps growing in the 911 center uh, between all the record checks that we do for the sheriff's office and uh, paperwork <coughs> entries to do for the courts. 30.8% 30, 30 deals with persons. 24.4% deals with the vehicles. 22.8% deals with court or, or in, inlets, which is pretty much any transactions that we utilize to run out of state, 16.4%. Driver's license, 5.1%. And then the other category. Just a five year comparison on our CAD reports. You see that's something that grows every year. Um, 
next slide. So our 911 call comparison for over the last five years. Um, 2015 is when we moved to the new building and we started um, maintaining the data a little differently. Um, alarm calls are categorized in another category now. So just gonna see that. I think maybe a couple years of start balancing out and going back up to what 15 look like. Five year comparison on wireless calls. See, we've gone down a little bit since 2015. The five year comparison for our administrator type calls. See, that's increased since <coughs> 2015. And in self initiated events, this is for the Sheriff's Office, majority, and then West Point Police, traffic stops, paper service, and that's steadily increased over the last five years. And NCIC link transactions, uh, five year comparison, you can kind of see how steadily it's increased. Um, continue to enter more paperwork for the courts and the Sheriff's Office. I guess that's fun. Anybody have any questions? Comments for Mike? Questions? Thanks. We appreciate the good job. Thank you. You guys are always busy. All right. Next is the report from the Hardin County Detention Center. Jailer Limblom. Trying to get him to do your report for you? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's a little bit taller. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hope everybody's doing well. We are. Uh, the report we did the regular monthly report for December. We also had a couple of things I want to highlight for last year. So, um, if you look at logging income, logging income is hanging there four hundred forty-one thousand four hundred thirty dollars and eighty-three cents. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, the uh, Class D corner is doing pretty well at keeping the state prisoners up and the, uh, of course, we don't have any control over the county prisoners coming in, but uh, they, uh, you know, the, the state prison would help, you know, the revenues come back in. If you look at the intakes, uh, 784 for the month of December, that's down. That's down a good bit, so that's a great thing. Uh, the release of 850, that's very nice, you know, very nice for the month of December. And as you can see, you know, December's kind of been a laid back, uh, laid back month anyway, so hopefully a lot of people stay home with their families for Christmas. Uh, if you look at the breakdown, 47%, uh, 47.6% state prisoners compared to counties. So we're trying to keep it at that 50 50 match. There was a lot of uh, releases made in the end of December. As you notice, there's going to be 440 something across the state. So uh, we lost, you know, a bunch of prisoners got out, which I'm not saying we lost them. They actually got out and they went home with their families. That's great. So uh, that's, that's not bad. If you look at the charges, you know, operating the influence spiked at 77. That's pretty rough. They're not, they're not listening to you. They're not uh, yeah. doing their thing and stuff. So please, anybody that's out and about stuff, please don't bring your drive. Um, it's just not worth it. I mean, it's not worth it at all. Salt, fourth degree, uh, was down a little bit to 43. Session marijuana is up to 40. Uh, EPO and DBO is actually down uh, four. That's, that's, uh, that's one of the lowest uh, months we had in all of uh, 19, I believe. So. Uh, theft out of seven cold checks was down nine. That's, that's pretty good, uh, pretty good month. Uh, shopping was uh, down 27. Of course, uh, felony charges were down. Uh, robbery was down. Assault was down, so that's good. Hopefully people are in the Christmas spirit and uh, not fighting over deals. <laughs> um, uh, flagrant non-sport, uh, flagrant non-sport down. So hopefully, uh, you know, money's rolling in and taking care of the kiddos. And uh, trafficking illegal substances is up just a touch, but it's 31. Uh, for the last um, two months, we've accepted every weekend to come in. We've actually had the space to do it. Uh, even today, our numbers for this morning were only 736. So we had some space to uh, have the weekend and stuff. You know, you remember two months ago it was up to 8:15. So we were screwing around for mattresses and everything else, and in different ways to put people. But uh, it's working out good. The numbers are staying too low, and I like that. Uh, if you look, the inmate hours worked. Like I said, it was a laid back month at the uh, Hardin County Jail. Uh, if you notice, we were averaging 20,000. Uh, 
we uh, we cut down about sixteen thousand three hundred ninety seven. So uh, uh, there's some different things around the around the jail and stuff for Christmas for the inmates and and for the deputies. So it worked out well. Uh, trash pickup. It might be about 327, but you'll uh, give you the numbers for the year here in a minute. You'll, uh, you'll like those pretty well. Uh, one of our uh, deputies is out with back surgery, and then a couple of them took vacation throughout the month of December. So. And plus, it was really cold some days, so a lot of the guys, <laughs> the deputies didn't like getting out. <laughs> um, as for medical, medical even right now is uh, hanging there pretty well. Uh, if you look at the uh, the uh, appropriation for stuff right now. Medical is doing very well for this year so far. Have you know more than half of the fiscal year, so uh, you guys are pretty. Uh, you guys enjoy that pretty well when we see that. <laughs> but outside of Pullman, there was 30 uh, mercy room visits. Was five. Uh, the nurses inside the jail took 1,382. So that's about staying the same, and uh, they've been seeing a lot more people inside the jail than sending them out. So that's really saved the county a lot of money. So uh, with our uh, contract with some health partners, they. Uh, they really worked pretty hard to keep this cost down, try to keep some of the, you know, uh, outside runs down to a minimum. Uh, still have 382 prisoners on medication in the center. That's uh, that's up there, but it is manageable. A lot of the times when there's certain uh, inmates that have higher medications, it costs us a lot of money. You know, when I say us, I mean the the county taxpayer. Um, we work with the county attorney's office and the county attorney's office, you know, mainly the county attorney's office too. Work on a way to get them released, or you know, do different you know ways of uh, you know, alternative sentences and stuff like that to keep the cost down to the county. And uh, you will see that it's working. It's working real well. And I thank uh, Miss Olin's office for that. They've been really helping us out with that. Uh, you know, you get a lot of uh, different people that come in that are that are pregnant that have detox. That's mm -hmm. a couple weeks in the hospital. That, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's hard to get people up there and sit with them and. It costs the taxpayer thousands. Uh, there's different things they got to do, and, but you know you want to make sure that everybody's healthy, so you got to do those, you know, you got to follow the protocols. So that's one thing they've been uh, really great at helping us out with that. And I will tell you this: one thing about this year is that uh, it seems like every agency in the county is working real well together. So uh, I've been really pleased with that. Uh, some of the numbers for last year, for, you know, for the actual calendar year of 19, uh, since we took office, um, roadside cleanup. Uh, 1,288.9 miles of streets here in Hardin County were cleaned by the uh, deputy inmates here at the Hardin County Jail. Uh, 29,282 bags of trash are collected. Uh, some of the deputies said we've never seen it this busy, but you know, if there's trash out there, they're going to get it. And uh, I tell you, they uh, they waited for on it, and as you can see, those numbers are way up. Uh, 71 deer have been removed from the roadside, you know, roadkill deer, so. Uh, it's not really a jail phone, but we try to pitch in there and help out and uh, you know, get out there and take care of that so people don't see those sitting on the side of the road. Uh, inmate hours working inside the facility. This is uh, people that work with the maintenance crews, the people that uh, you know, clean up the jail on the uh, outside of the pods, people that uh, cook the meals, people that do different things around the facility. It's 122,884 hours of working last year. That's uh, that number of way. Uh, we make sure that uh, the place is clean. We make sure that uh, it actually smells pleasant when you walk in. It's a nice environment. Uh, inmates work in the community. That's people that go out with a helping hand, people that go to the road department, people that go out uh, all over the county and work. That's 219,003 hours. They've been working. Uh, I will tell you this we kept more state prisoners this year than we have in the past. Uh, we found more jobs for them, so they've been out there working, they're working hard. And uh, I will tell you this: sometimes I see that some of the inmates, you know, that go out and pick up trash, go out and work in the community. Some have a strong community support system, you know, in supporting this community and stuff. Even though they're not from here, they work the tail off, and uh, they do a really good job for us. And uh, like I said, we try to reward them when we can. Um, as you know, since we also uh, maintain and. Uh, Keep clean and mow. We need 47 different properties across Hardin County, which saves the taxpayers a lot of money and saves you a lot of hassle. You know, having you know, hire crews to go out and, and do all that stuff. So that's 47 across the county. And so far this year, uh, last year and stuff, there's not a single municipality here in Hardin County that has not had a uh, 
a job throughout there working in that community uh, on the project or anything else. I mean, even the city of East Town has asked us to help out with projects. So I think that's great. I mean, we, uh, you know, we saved a lot of money across the county. So uh, the ending numbers for sheriff staffing, that was a big thing and stuff we did this year and stuff. That was a big thing that, uh, you know, with y'all's MOU with uh, sheriff staffing. And uh, I'll tell you this, it's working. It's working. Because I know none of y'all really had any doubts on it. I mean, it was one of those things that was unanimous. But uh, the inmates that are working that program, of course, we capped the program for it. Right about 42 uh, inmates that are actually working in factories. Uh, right now, the inmates at this date, of course, you know, we started back in May, I believe, uh, $325,560.33 have been made by the inmates working. When normally they'd be laying on the necks, not doing anything. And now they got the means to uh, take care of themselves when they get out. So that is a big thing, and uh, you guys are a big part of that. So, uh, you know, just applaud yourself. And if I could add to that, not to interrupt, but 30000 of that was child support. Well, yeah, not just an obligation, not, but we've that's, already that's received. That's not even part of child support yet. That's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, she's right. I mean, there's, uh, you know, 30000 you know, collecting the child support deal. That's, so that's, thank that's you. great. You know, so, but uh, that was my next thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Sorry to steal your thunder. But now, another thing that, you know, benefits us and that, you know, work release fees. Work release fees this day are $47,739.35. Uh, that was recouped uh, by the Harden County Jail, you know. That's somebody the jail fund that, you know, we wouldn't have had before. Uh, so you figure, come May, you know, you know, we should have, you know, it's, it's working. Is that from this program, Josh? Yes. Okay. That's just okay. this program alone. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, that's the money recouped and stuff for the money that they had to pay the other program. So, but it's changing lives. The uh, first person that was on the program, uh, he's actually making $47,000 a year right now. He's still at the same company he started at when he was in jail. Um, he, uh, he said the other day and stuff that he got $2,500 Christmas bonus. So, I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> you know no other place he's ever worked at. So, that you know, get Christmas bonus. He was really excited about that. Did he, did he give you part of it? No, 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 no. I don't. No, I, uh, I'm just, I'm just happy and glad that he's, uh, he's done it, well. Bro. Really done well for himself. Really done good. So, um, we are uh, in the top five in the state for fingerprinting compliance. It never was a problem before. I'm not going to say it's because of us. Um, they said for the last ten years it's been all parking has always been in the top five. Uh, right now we're number three. So that's that's great. We're 100 percent, and uh, uh, that's really good. Uh, we have had zero days in 2019 off uh, for work-related injuries. Uh, Richard DeWitt is uh, doing well. <laughs> he's, he's running around like crazy and stuff, praising and stuff, but it's, uh, the staff have had and stuff's done really well at uh, taking care of things and uh, keeping themselves out of harm's way and uh, the training is working, so it's, uh, it's doing well. We have paid out zero unemployment claims, not a one. In the year 20, uh, 2019, and we'll keep that up. And you know, like I said, it's, you know, that's another thing that's down a whole lot. Uh, we've graduated more. I'm sorry, we graduated more inmates this year from GED than ever before. Mm. And also, we are the number one in the state for graduating people from GED. And we had 48 graduates this year. Mm. 48 people that wouldn't have a high school diploma before mm. now have a high school diploma because they're in jail. That's true. Um, now that's not counting the ones that did their classes here at the jail, and when they got out, they went to the test, and that's another 40 or so. That's, you know, Miss uh, <clears throat> Joyce and Miss Diane down there at the uh, jail that worked through uh, adult education have been doing a great job. Uh, they really, I'm there. If, if you ever took a graduation, of course, you know, Daniel London has a tenant, and a couple of y'all have a tenant, but uh, um, it's something to think about, because you know, these people have never done it before. And they went, got, they went to graduate high school uh, and now they can do so much more with themselves. Uh, we've graduated 42 people from our country arts program. Uh, with it, uh, you actually get uh, a certificate when you get out and stuff to work in restaurants. You know, to serve safe and everything. Uh, teach you other things from, they, they, they teach you to start out boiling water all the way to making a full meal. So, a lot of these guys, and, you know, uh, they're, they're ready to get out and work, and they give them a list of restaurants that are ready to hire them at that time, and a lot of them work in restaurants now, so that's a big thing. Uh, revenues are up, costs are down, uh, everybody's pretty happy about that. And I just want to say, like I said, it's so far 2019, it's, uh, 
it's uh, it's doing well. We're gonna keep up the good work, and uh, I said my staff right now, they're doing a great job. Uh, I praise them, and uh, I just want to tell them, you know, tell them thank you, because I mean, that's they really make me look good, so that's hard to do. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. So, but I appreciate y'all. Any questions on anything? That is a fantastic report. Mm -hmm. I can do it, sir. That's a fantastic report. <laughs> that is a great report. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Get it up and shut it from the mouth. We're going to. Uh, we're, we're very competitive. You know, uh, on a daily basis, my myself and my chief deputy will actually go through and. You know, any equipment we need, any kind of anything, we will go and we will find the different companies to try to uh, get the best price. And it's very competitive at the jail, so we're trying to beat all these numbers come next year. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. So I'll I tell you what, I would, I would, I, I just can't believe that there were no unemployment uh -huh. wages paid out, yes, and okay. there were no uh, lost days as a result of injuries. Well, I mean, and, and like I said, it's... Uh, it's I mean, this is a jail, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, it is a jail. It is a jail and stuff. And like I said, it's, uh, you know, we, we do take a personal note and see how the employees are. We do different things, but, uh, you know, our training staff is doing good uh, every year. Of course, I think right now, at least working for the staff, we've got a training for the year. It's our training February. Uh, for their set hours, but they still have training hours going throughout. Um, it's just one of those things. You uh, you have faith in your staff. They have faith in you, and they know that you know. And no not they call you, you can come in, uh, or you know, you know, whatever. Like I said, you just take care of your staff. They take care of you. And like I said, right now we have a great staff. And as you know, I mean, we got some great employees here in Hardin County that are just you know die hard, and they uh, they love this. I mean, they love hearing these things, and. Uh, like I said, you know, when you, you praise them for this, they'll look you taking care of them. Good job. Appreciate yeah. it. Please make sure they know our appreciation as well. Yeah. Right? Like others have said, those are great numbers, whether it's, uh, well, they're just all great. Yeah. They, they really are. You know, yeah. used to, we were excited about the litter program, and we still are. But you got so many other great things that you and your staff are focused on now, whether it's uh, jobs for the inmates and making sure that they're productive yes. citizens when they leave to taking good care of your own staff. We really appreciate it. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to ordinances, agreements, and resolutions. And first up is item 4A, is resolution 2020-012. It's approving participation in the Kentucky Employees Health, Dental, Vision, and Life Insurance. This is something that came before the Resources and Community uh, Services uh, Committee last week, twice in fact we met, and you know, reflecting on it for some 50 years now, we've been in the state's retirement program, and for decades we've, in one form or another, done our own insurance for employees and haven't participated in the Kentucky's uh, health insurance, and dental insurance, all those uh, items before. And it was because we thought we could get, and we did, get better premiums, uh, whether it was through other carriers or whether it was through self-insurance, which we've done for the last decade or so. Uh, but with changes that there is in health care, the, the constant strains, the increasing prices, uh, the impacts the Affordable Care Act had uh, on us, it's just become increasingly more difficult for us to be, uh, have competitive rates within ourselves to be able to do that notwithstanding that uh, most people in the public don't realize that we have not uh, afforded our employees' families uh, good opportunities to be able to get health care. While they might be able to be members of our plan, the employee had to pay all the difference. We only took care of the employee and not, not family members, as many businesses do these days, uh, larger concerns. And that's increasingly becoming more difficult on our employees' families uh, to be able to manage. Uh, almost intolerable, and it's showing in our retention and recruiting, uh, which is costly for us also with the turnover that we have. Uh, so the, the committee viewed that and, and is willing to propose today that while it may end up costing the county some more dollars, which we'll have to cope with, uh, but for us to move to the Kentucky Employees Health Plan uh, to be able to provide better opportunities uh, for those employees and their family members, 
and to be more stable for us perhaps in the future uh, with the growing uh, cost of health care. Um, Ms. Boone is the chairwoman of that committee. Is there anything you'd like to add, Ms. Boone? Yes, as you said, we did review this at length in two meetings, and I believe just about all the magistrates were there. And I do want to just, before I forget, to say special thanks to our treasurer, Lisa Pierman, and uh, Assistant Treasurer Sarah Lutz, who worked so hard and ran the numbers on every possible scenario that, that you can think of. As, as the judge said, we looked hard at the state plan. We looked at our increase. We knew that was, that was we were going to keep the same uh, coverage, only uh, maybe our out-of-pocket was going to be a little bit more, and it was going to go up 130000 a year anyway just to stay where we were. And as the judge alluded to, it has been so expensive for our employees and they couldn't even afford uh, the family coverage and to cover their children. And so we've just heard things like the glowing report from our jailer uh, about our employees and what a good job they're doing. Uh, I think uh, Daniel London uh, mentioned that it is, it is warranted and well-deserved for our employees that we should think about them and try to do a little bit uh, of something here to make this more affordable for them. Several department heads, I think Jamie Armstrong was there and, and others uh, that have asked for this for the employees. And so we, we know they deserve it. They've worked hard. They've, they've given us a lot of cost savings in other areas, just like we've heard from the jail, from the landfill um, that's been in the news lately. Some money we're, we're getting there. So we think this is, is warranted. The committee looked at it long and hard. Uh, but we do like the coverage that's offered on the state plan, and we, we uh, did want to bring this to you, and I would recommend that uh, we vote on this. So I'll recommend this for approval. You may have a motion. Ms. Boone makes that as a motion. Second. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Doug Goodman will second it. Any discussion? This will cut our liability down a little bit too, won't you? Going with the state plans. I know. I'm not sure about liability, but it, it will reduce our risk, perhaps. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. From being cuts down the stop, mm -hmm. yeah, especially for our stop loss. And mm -hmm. We don't have it. State. Do we? I mean, no, we don't right. have a stop loss right. anymore. The stop loss was going up too in the renewal. So. You know, Judge, this finally gives a deserving and dedicated group of. Uh, employees for the county of good health care and I'm, I'm very pleased to support it other comments from court members uh i have agonized over this uh, i have done everything i can to support employees for the last 17 years um i think this is going to pass without a doubt but will it pass with my vote? I don't know. I've, I've really sweated it because I don't want to get the county into a position where we have to do some things that we don't want to do in order to sustain this. Now, I think the jailer has, has mentioned here today they're, they're doing some things that are just great in order to cut uh, expenses. Jamie has talked about cutting expenses. I think that uh, some of the things that Daniel London has done at the landfill and other places has cut expenses. And I think that we can afford to do this without putting an undue uh, burden on our taxpayers. Uh, I will vote yes on it. There are some taxes that I will not agree to vote for in order to sustain it. That's all I have to say. Anyone with other comments? Uh, we don't normally take comments uh, on voting items, but I'll make an exception if you've got something short. Like they have it provided, it's dedicated to them. 
I've got your top 25 drugs for the last year and what you spent. It wasn't on just set this down if it's okay, but just the spend on those drugs last year, $269,179. Top 25 drugs, that was it. Through us and through the help of member medical, we can get those costs down to under $21,000. You want a different solution? I ask that you table this, speak with us, talk with USI. That's also a part of this who's helping, I think who helped does your insurance now and who's helped us with other large corporations in this area. And look at the savings. That's nearly $250,000 right there on your top 25 drugs only. It's not including visits to the providers where those costs are going to come down. But I ask that you table that, look at these, see if it's an option. Because this is an option that a lot of county governments are going to in the state of North Carolina, the state of South Carolina, the whole state of Nebraska is moving to this. It's called direct primary care. I'll be happy to meet with whomever. But I think it's an opportunity that if you can wait another week to table and see and say, Jim, that's just not what you say it is, I'll put you in touch with some of the companies that we're working with so you can speak to those owners and how their employees are receiving it and the savings they're seeing. So that's, that's the part that I wanted to just put out there and make sure we're, we are exploring everything. And, and, and to your note, it's probably our fault that we didn't get in front of you sooner to let you know this was out there. USI did come to our yes. committee. Yes, and, and, and we're working with them on some different things. And as you can see, those are the savings, that, those are actual savings that can occur. And that's only the top 25 drugs. Mm -hmm. And if you want to access and you want to give a better benefit to your employees that you all said you do, and I'm certain that you do, the care and the benefit and the reaction that these employees are giving back to the owners, saying it's some of the greatest, that's the greatest benefit they've had. Now that's not every one of them. Look, there's not too many benefits you give where your employees actually come back and say this is the best benefit we've ever had. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone with other comments? As Ms. Boone said, USI was, as committee members know, a part of the process. All right. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Donnelly? Easter? Yes. Doug Goodman? Yes. Boone? Yes. Clam? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. And item 4B is resolution 2020-013. It's approving the voluntary payroll deductions. Uh, the listing for those is included in your packet. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. King, second by Mr. Ronnie Goodman. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Dolly. Doug Goodman? Yes. Boone? Yes. Clam? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Uh, the consent agenda is the next item. Those were included in your electronic packet on Friday. Are there any corrections that need to be made? Vote to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Doug Goodman, second by Mr. Bill Wiseman. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Dolly. Boone? Yes. Clam? Yes. Wiseman? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ronnie Goodman? Yes. King? Yes. Judge Berry? Yes. Easter? Yes. Judge Yes. We'll start around the table with discussion today with Mr. Clem. Uh, thank you, Judge. I've, folks, unless you want to visit Josh, please don't <laughs> drink and drive, and please don't text and drive. That's all I've got. Ms. Boone? I think that's all. One thing I, I think I'm going to start adding to it, please don't litter. Uh, as Josh says, they pick up just thousands of bags, and, and I know he's working out in my district right now. Uh, I was down some roads the other day, and it's just ridiculous what people do. So please, yep. please, pop it. <laughs> That's all. I have no items, Judge. Uh, Mr. Easter. I have no items. Thank you. Mr. King. I have no items. Mr. Goodman. I have nothing. No uh, items. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Wise. Uh, oh, that's fast. <laughs> Ms. Holden, anything from your office? Well, I will say how appreciative I am of uh, my office getting ready to go on the state health plan. That will help me a great deal with retention and recruitment and retaining solid employees. So, thank you. Ms. Dolly, anything from your office? Yes. I would remind everybody that the next meeting of Pardon County Fiscal Court is on Tuesday, the 11th of February at 3.30 in the afternoon here in the courtroom. And if there's nothing else to come before us, the motion would be in order for us to adjourn. Thank you.
First by Mr. Clem, second by Mr. Wiseman. Hearing no objection, we stand adjourned.